Chapter 12, Catch of the Day. Shelly draped a towel around her neck and tucked her hands under her arms. Then she dashed from the locker room to the big swim meet. She couldn't let anyone see her fish anatomy. That was how she'd come to think of it. Kendall shot her a strange look, but didn't say anything. Kendall had her game face on. This was her rematch against Little River. That meant one thing. Shelly was facing Judy Weisberg again in the 50-meter freestyle. But for now, Shelly could relax. The first event was Kendall's, the breaststroke. Judy was swimming in the race as well, and Shelly was ready to root her heart out for Kendall. She was about to sit on the bench when Coach Greeley tapped her clipboard and said, You're up, Shelly. She pointed to the middle lane starting block. Shelly's heart lurched. But I don't swim the breaststroke. After that record-breaking performance at practice, practice you do, Coach crowed. Shelly's eyes darted to Kendall, who scowled like Shelly had never seen her scowl before. Um, okay, Shelly said, stepping up to the block. Now she had to swim fast enough to beat Judy, but not so fast that she would upset Kendall. Okay, she could do this. She just needed to pay close attention to where both Kendall and Judy were in the water at all times. Luckily, her lane was situated right between theirs. Buoyed by her strategy, Shelley took a deep breath and glanced at Judy Weisberg. Judy shot her a nasty look. Good luck, fish lover. You're going to need it. Trust me, Shelley said, keeping her towel over her shoulders. You won't beat me this time. The buzzer sounded. Shelly dropped the towel and dove headlong into the pool. She cut through the water faster than ever before, her gills opening and closing and filling her with all the breath she could ever need and more. Her webbed hands and feet propelled her through the water at high speed. In fact, she was going too fast. She tried desperately to slow down, but she couldn't, no matter what she did. She kept swimming faster and faster. Her arms and legs seemed to have minds of their own. She started to panic, but there was nothing she could do ex except keep swimming. Why couldn't she slow down? With horror, it dawned on her. She, made, she had made a wish to become the fastest swimmer. The sea witch had granted that exact wish. What Shelley hadn't realized was she couldn't reverse it. She couldn't swim slowly anymore, no matter what she did. She would always be the fastest swimmer for all eternity. Come on. After her first flip turn, she was already several strokes ahead of Judy and the other swimmers. Then, after the second turn, it was half the pool's length. She swam faster than any human ever, possibly. After she had lapped all the other racers in the pool, she slapped her hand onto the edge and stayed put. So I can stop swimming, she thought relieved. She glanced up at the scoreboard and her eyes widened in joy and fear. It was a new record, but while she wanted to beat Judy and win the race, she hadn't wanted to win like this. She remembered a Tina's warning. Kendall would be upset that Shelley beat her top score in a real race. While everyone in the stands was focused on the scoreboard, Shelley slipped out of her lane and back under her towel, feeling defeated. From the bench, she watched the other swimmers struggling to finish the last lap. Coach Greeley ran over to her with clipboard and stopwatch in hand. Great job, Shelly, she exclaimed. A new school record, and this time it's official. Better yet, it's even faster than your practice time. Wow, just wow. Thanks, Shelly said sheepishly. While Coach Greeley scribbled more notes on her clipboard, Shelly glanced at her team. They were out of the pool and racing toward her, cheering for her along with the crowd in the stands, which was, miss which was missing her parents but Kendall was not cheering. Their eyes met as Kendall climbed out of the water and she glared at Shelly something fierce. Alana and Atina looked glum.
They both knew what had just happened. They knew that Shelley had taken the record from Kendall. And this time, like Coach said, it was official. Coach Greeley patted Shelley hard on the back as she had addressed the rest of the team. Looks like we have a new top swimmer at Triton Bay. She beamed at Shelley, who cringed in response. Kendall looked downright furious. Her expression sent a cold wave through Shelley. The whole reason she had made her wish, the reason this all had been happening to her, was that she didn't want to lose her new friends. But the wish hadn't helped at all. In fact, it had made everything worse. Kendall hated her, and the twins would surely follow suit. Shelly, where are you going? Coach Greeley called after her. But Shelly had rushed to the locker room, tears pricking her eyes and blurring her vision. She tried to change quickly before the rest of the team, her team came in. She needed to get her gloves on and fasten her scarf around her neck. She couldn't risk anyone seeing her without her disguise. She pulled out the gloves and slid one on, but in her frazzled state, she dropped the other on the floor. She reached down to pick it up when someone stepped on it. Shelly looked up. Kendall was staring down at her. She studied Sh Shelly's bare hand, complete with its webbed fingers. Kendall's face contorted in disgust. What's that? Did you cheat or something? Shelly yanked the glove from under Kendall's foot and slid it on. No, not at all. Kendall squinted at her. You're acting awfully fishy. Also, how could you take over my event? What? Why? Didn't you want me to win? Shelly said, scared of her friend's reaction. So that we could beat Little River? I did it. We did it. What does it matter who came first as long as we got the trophy? Who cares about the trophy, said Kendall. You were just being a show-off, and nobody likes a show-off. Kendall eyed Shelly's now-gloved hand, or a cheat. And with that, Kendall stormed out. Shelly felt as if a jellyfish had stung her right in the heart. Shelly hid in the showers until all the girls had gone, and then she stumbled back into the locker room. When she cracked open her locker and pulled out her backpack, she felt the shell lodged in there, the nautilus shell that started this wild chain of events. That shell and the sea witch were the reason she was in this mess in the first place. Sure, things hadn't been perfect in her life before her wish, but they were better than this. Fish love her taunts reverberated in her head. Her body was transforming into a fish. Would it ever go back to normal? She pulled out the shell and stared at it, and then, almost on impulse, she tossed it into the trash can. She waited for something terrible to happen, but nothing did. She let out her breath. It felt like a weight had lifted off her shoulders. Good riddance, she thought. She headed back to the indoor pool. All she could think about was the look of disgust on Kendall's face. It hovered in her memory with every step she took. Shelly's mother was supposed to be in the school parking lot by then to pick her up. As Shelly passed the pool, it was dark and shadowy. The main lights had already been turned off. Only the pool lights glowed, casting eerie, rippling shadows across the walls. She walked along the edge of the pool. Suddenly, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a dark shadow dart under the water. It created a ripple that curled from one end of the pool to the other. Watching it, Shelly skidded to a halt, her heart thudding. Hello? Is anybody there? She called out, squinting at the pool. That was when she saw it again. There was something in the water. She peered over the edge of the pool and down at the blue-green water. Glowing eyes gl locked onto hers. She staggered backward and ran, but a thick black tentacle shot out of the water and grabbed her ankle. No, let me go, she screamed, digging her nails into the tentacle to try to get free. But the tentacle pulled her closer to the edge of the pool, where the glowing eyes and dark shadow waited for her, just under the waterline. Shelly staggered toward the water, closer and closer, trying her hardest to break free. A cackle reverberated through the arena. It was the sea witch. 
Stop! Shelly screamed, fighting to pry the tentacle off her leg. She was on the cement floor as it cr kept pulling her toward the pool, closer and closer. The eyes watched her, unblinking. Shelly was inches away from being yanked into the water. You forgot our deal, Ursula cackled. You owe me a favor. But I take my wish back, Shelly screamed at the tentacle t as the tit tentacle tightened. I didn't mean it. No take backs, my dear. Come to my lair or else. Shelly struggled against the tentacle, punching the slimy flesh, and finally it released its grip and slithered back into the pool. Shelly ran as fast as she could. The sea witch couldn't follow her out of the water. Could she? I'm dreaming, she thought. It's the only explanation. It's not real. But when she reached the parking lot, she glanced down at her ankle. There were bright red welts where tentacles, where the tentacle suction, suction cups had grabbed her. She rubbed the skin carefully, wincing. Shelly climbed into the back seat of her mother's minivan, numb with shock. Her ankle throbbed. Her best friends thought she was a total freak. And the worst part was Kendall was right. She was a freak and a cheater. She didn't deserve the high score, and she certainly didn't deserve friends. As the car whipped along the ocean parkway, her gaze drifted to the open sea. One thought filled her head. She had to figure out a way to stop this, make this stop, once and for all. She had a terrible feeling the sea witch wasn't going to let her forget about their deal that easily. She'd escape this time, but next time... She might not be so lucky.